Hi, creeps, and welcome back to Dread and Buried. I'm your host, Bree, and before we get started today, I want to provide some trigger warnings. Today's story talks about murder, so please take care while listening. Today, we embark on a journey into the enigmatic and terrifying tale of the servant girl annihilator. This elusive serial killer struck fear into the heart of Austin, Texas from late 1884 until Christmas Eve of 1885. Join us as we unravel the disturbing details surrounding these unsolved murders that shook an entire city to its core. The Servant Girl Annihilator, also known as the Austin Axe Murderer, operated three years prior to the infamous Jack the Ripper's reign of terror in London. This makes the case of the Servant Girl Annihilator an important milestone in the history of serial killers in the United States. From late 1884 to December 1885, this unknown predator preyed upon the citizens of Austin leaving behind a trail of horror and an enduring mystery. Let's dive into the murders themselves, for it is within the details that we may uncover clues about the identity and motives of the servant girl annihilator. The first victim, Molly Smith, was a young black woman who worked as a cook. On December 30th, 1884, her lifeless body was discovered in the snow near her employer's home. Molly had suffered a gaping axe wound to her head, along with multiple stab wounds on her chest, abdomen, legs, and arms. The brutality of the attack was evident, as there was a pool of blood that was so extensive, she seemed to almost be floating in it. The second victim, Eliza Shelley, was also a black woman who was employed as a cook and she met her tragic end on May 7, 1885. Eliza's head was nearly split in two by a powerful blow from an axe. It became clear that the servant girl annihilator had a preference for targeting women of a specific profession, and she employed a brutal method of murder. Irene Cross, a servant and the third black woman targeted by the annihilator, experienced a horrifying assault on May 23rd, 1885. She was repeatedly stabbed with a knife and nearly scalped. It was during this time that O. Henry, a well-known short story author, gave the killer the name Servant Girl Annihilator in a letter to a friend. The fourth victim was an 11-year-old black girl named Mary Ramey. On August 30th, 1885, the murderer entered her bedroom, rendering her mother, Rebecca, unconscious. Mary was then dragged outside and into a wash house, where she was subjected to a horrific ordeal. She was sexually assaulted and brutally stabbed through the ear, further adding to the unmanageable pain and suffering inflicted upon this innocent victim. The fifth and sixth victims, Grace Vance and her husband, Orange Washington, were a married couple. And on September 28, 1885, their lives were abruptly ended when they were found with their heads bludgeoned. According to a report from the Austin Daily Statesman, Gracie, as Grace was affectionately known, was, quote, almost beaten into jelly. The extent of the violence and the brutality inflicted upon the victims was truly horrifying. On Christmas Eve of 1885, the servant girl annihilator committed two separate crimes in two different locations, deviating from their previous pattern. These victims were white, unlike the previous targets. Susan Hancock, the seventh victim, was attacked while she slept in the bed of her 16-year-old daughter. Her head was cleaved in two just before midnight, leaving a devastating sight for her daughter to witness. 
Examination of Susan's wounds indicated that a sharp and thin object had been driven through her right ear into her brain, an act of unspeakable cruelty. The eighth and final victim of the Servant Girl Annihilator was Eula Phillips, a young woman of only 17 years. Eula's life was brutally snuffed out just an hour after Susan Hancock's murder in the early morning hours of Christmas Day. Her head had been crushed by a savage blow from an axe. The Fort Worth Gazette described the tragic scene, stating that Eula's face was turned upward in the dim moonlight, etched with an expression of agony that even death could not erase. She had been sexually assaulted, and her arms were pinned down by pieces of wood. Eyewitnesses provided conflicting accounts of the killer's appearance leaving investigators with a perplexing puzzle to solve. Some claimed that he was a white or dark-complexioned man, while others described him as a yellow man, using lamp black to conceal his skin color. Reports mentioned various disguises, such as a man wearing a Mother Hubbard-style dress, or a slouch hat with a white rag covering the lower part of his face. There were even rumors of potential accomplices or a gang of murderers involved in these heinous crimes. Despite intense efforts by the police, private investigators, and even enraged mobs, the servant girl annihilator managed to elude capture. In total, around 400 men were arrested under suspicion of being the annihilator, but none were successfully convicted of the crime. The city of Austin was consumed by fear and panic, as its residents lived in constant terror, uncertain of when or where the Annihilator would strike next. Amidst the chaos, a number of theories emerged, each attempting to unravel the mystery behind the Server Girl Annihilator's identity. One hypothesis proposes that a Malaysian cook named Maurice employed at the Pearl House Hotel in Austin, may have been the killer. The fact that most of the victims resided in the immediate vicinity of the Pearl House raised suspicions. Maurice's sudden departure from Austin shortly after the murder ceased, coinciding with the timeline of Jack the Ripper's crimes in London, led to speculation that he may have continued his reign of terror across the Atlantic. Another intriguing theory suggests that James Maybrick, a Liverpool cotton merchant suspected to be Jack the Ripper, could also be the servant girl annihilator. Author Shirley Harrison presents evidence in her book titled Jack the Ripper, The American Connection, linking Maybrick to both series of murders. Maybrick's own journals allegedly contain confessions of killing sex workers and a page signed, Jack the Ripper, further fuel speculation. Additionally, Maybrick was present in Austin during the time of the Server Girl murders, and his death, likely due to arsenic and strychnine poisoning, occurred shortly after the cessation of both series of killings. In a surprising twist, a 2014 episode of History Detectives explored the possibility that a young black man named Nathan Elgin, who worked as a cook in downtown Austin, could have been the servant girl annihilator. Elgin was tragically shot by the police when he attempted to abduct a girl from a saloon in February of 1886, coincidentally aligning with the end of the murders. Though the timing may raise eyebrows, the connection between Elgin and the servant girl annihilator remains speculative. With numerous theories and unanswered questions, the true identity of the Servant Girl Annihilator remains shrouded in darkness. What motivated this unknown predator to commit such heinous acts? Was it the work of a single individual or a group of criminals? We may never know the answers, but the memory of the innocent lives lost to this early American serial killer lives on.